So in the last video, we wrote down D'Alembert's principle and uh, I promise that next time I will derive equations of motion involving the generalized coordinates, okay? And that's what we are going to do now. So let's uh, remind ourselves what the D'Alembert principle is and from there we'll um, start changing the coordinates from R to Q, R being the Cartesian and Q are our generalized coordinates. Okay. So here we go. So my relation was mi r i double dot minus f i and dotted with the virtual displacements okay and if you sum over all the particles this is zero okay that's your Delembert principle okay now instead of the Cartesian coordinates r I will convert everything to the generalized coordinates and here is the relation so I have r i okay they are function of all the coordinates q's and they are 3n minus k where k are the total number of independent constraints and we have already assumed that we have holonomic constraints okay that's good now I can take a differential of this and write dri I should put vector symbols here okay dri is what del r i over del q let me call alpha I'm using alpha okay d q alpha and I should sum over all the generalized coordinates and I, I will also have a time derivative term which means I missed writing in the previous line something so here we should include time as well put a comma and make it a t okay this is time t okay and dt dt is missing perfect now if I want to write down the uh, derivatives then I should write down ri dot okay I'm dividing everything by time dt delta r i over delta q alpha q alpha dot so this dq alpha divided over dt becomes q alpha dot and you still have a sum over alpha plus delta r i over delta t good and what will the virtual displacement satisfy virtual displacements would satisfy delta r i sorry um, that's correct that's correct delta r i equals delta r delta q alpha delta q alpha okay as you remember I have to drop the d t term that is good now before I proceed further I should um, uh, state two results which we are going to use in massaging the uh, the D'Alembert uh, principle written here and those two results are the following result r e s u l t result one and the result one is that if you take delta r i delta q alpha and if you put dots both on r i and q alpha then uh, this equals that relation so if I, I, I can uh, take this and put dots on both r i and q alpha so delta r 
i dot over delta q alpha that's that is result number one that we are going to use and then let's look at result number two r e s u l t which says if you take delta r i or delta q alpha <coughs> and you put a dot on this then this is same as delta r i alpha with a total time derivative that is correct very good that's correct so i'm going to utilize these two results okay now let's look at um, okay maybe first i should prove them okay that is that will be better so let's go here first one is quite trivial um, you see this one this one is uh, easy this i can see from here so you take ri dot okay and this relation is a linear combination of is a linear sum of q alphas okay so this is del ri over <coughs> del q1 q1 dot plus del ri over del q2 q2 dot and so forth and this piece this piece is a function of q and q dot dependence is only here so if i take a partial derivative with respect to q alpha dot only this piece will survive this will drop out because there is no q dot in here so first one is quite trivial as you can see um nevertheless i think i want to do it for you okay so let's do that i wish i knew how to um copy this let's see is there a way to copy the frame no okay anyhow so what i wrote was ri dot right that is what we had on the previous slide let's check and you have a summation over alpha that is correct okay now i want to take a derivative with respect to q alpha so that's what i do alpha now if i do so i should not use the same alpha here okay because this is dummy this is summed over so it makes no sense to keep alpha there so let's use some other symbol let's say s to denote the sum so this will become del over del q alpha summation over s delta r okay that's the first term so i've changed the dummy index alpha to s okay and this term will go away because this does not involve i'm sorry there was a q alpha dot here and this does not involve a q alpha dot now this is summation over s i can take this partial derivative and pull through the summation and it will not not act on this because this is a function of q's and not alpha so it goes directly to act on this one so i get del r i del q s okay and del q s alpha dot okay this is the right way of doing it so sometimes student will just read from here that oh i'm taking derivative with respect to q alpha dot and this is what will be left over which is correct answer but you should know how to proceed i mean how how you should get it otherwise there is chances that you will start making mistakes elsewhere now look at this piece 
what is this so delta q s dot over delta q alpha dot is what's your understanding see when s and alpha are same then the answer is 1 okay so delta s q dot delta s delta q s dot over delta q s dot is 1 and when s and alpha are different the answer is zero because these are independent uh, variables okay so clearly unless s and alpha are same the answer is zero and when s and alpha are same sorry if s and alpha are not same the answer is zero and if s and alpha are same the answer is one and that's what a chronicle delta is okay so this thing is delta s alpha okay so i substitute this thing here and I get OS delta delta S alpha. Now what is that? So here there is a sum over S and unless S and alpha are equal, it always gives zero. So it multiplies zero to this. So it gives a zero contribution. And only when this, this S hits alpha, this gives a non-zero contribution, this entire thing, because this is one then, and the result will be delta R I alpha. Okay, so that's how you show this uh, simple result. So anyway, we have proved our result number one, which was quite trivial. I just spent some time uh, in showing you the algebra explicitly, but uh, the proof was fairly trivial. Now let me prove the result number two. Okay, what I want to show is, yeah. So I start with the, um, with the right hand side here in the result two, okay. So del R i dot over del Q alpha. So I start with del R delta q alpha now i will write this as q alpha and i will just write down what ri dot is and you know what that is i again i should use a symbol uh, different symbol so it should be delta r no not dot delta r i over delta q s q s dot plus delta r correct that is absolutely correct okay now you see this partial derivative i can pull through the sigma of course and it will uh, act only this part because q s dot is independent of q s so uh, it, it doesn't work on this one so it will work on this and the QS will also go through the delta over delta T and work on this one, okay? So when I take this and put it here, because um, the delta Q alpha and delta QS I can interchange, okay? I can do the interchange. The, they are independent, co independent coordinates for different alpha and different S. And when they are the same, it anyway doesn't matter which, which order way you write. So the upshot is that I can write this as summation over S delta over delta Q S delta okay Q S dot plus over delta T delta Q alpha, right? And that's what the uh, expression for a total time derivative is, del over del t, and differentials with respect to coordinate times the uh, velocities, okay? So this is nothing but d over dt, del r, why I'm putting a dots here, Okay, QED, that's correct, proved. 
um, the LR, let me check. Perfect, that's perfect. Okay, so we will utilize these two results in um, dealing with our uh, Dalember principle. So let's proceed then. Now, um, here, in this, there are two pieces. So first term is this, which includes the dot DRI as well, and this is the second term, FI dot DRI, okay? So let's look at the second term first, FI dot delta RI. There is a minus sign as well. So second term was minus um, summation over all the particles we had, Fi dot delta Ri. That is correct, okay? Which is same as minus summation over I, Fi dot Delta R i is del R i over del Q alpha, dQ alpha, delta Q alpha. Okay, these are virtual displacements. That's why the time part is gone. Okay, now look at this. I can um, define something called a generalized force. So this part I will call Q alpha. You see the index I is summed over, so that's not a free index, The only the alpha index is free. So I define this quantity to be Q alpha. So Q alpha is summation over I Okay, that's the definition of Q alpha. And with that, the second term becomes minus Q alpha delta Q alpha. And it's uh, quite natural to call Q alphas to be the generalized forces. You see, here the forces were multiplying the virtual <coughs> displacements. Here, you again have virtual displacements, but those of generalized coordinates. So whatever here is, uh, you will call generalized force. Force, okay. And note that the Fi dot delta Ri is the work done under virtual displacement and so is Q alpha times delta Q alpha. That's also the work done under virtual displacements. Okay, so we have written down the second term in D'Alembert principle in this manner. Now let's look at the first term which was here, mri, mi, ri double dot, dot delta ri, okay? So that's what we want to write now. So let's see, term number one, here was term number two. Uh, mi, now this is going to be very interesting. We are almost there, mi ri double dot, dot delta r, I summation over all I that's correct now this thing I will write as M I again for delta R I I will do what I did here I will write dot delta R Q <coughs> Q alpha, that is fine, okay, this is, this is perfectly, that's good, that's good, everything is okay. Now, uh, I think I can, leave around the, okay, there's also a sum over alpha now because I'm summing over alpha here, okay. So what I'll do is I'll just pick up this piece 
and leave the delta q for the moment and just work on th this part okay so let's take this this is i will leave some space here or maybe i should go to okay so i have mi double dot okay let me go there m i r i double dot and then we had del r i o del q alpha okay so what we can do is um, i will write this in the following form see r double dot involves two time derivatives so i'm going to pull out one time derivative and leave the velocity that is r dot behind so i write this as d over dt even in fact i i should have left behind the mi is also so let's leave mi also no 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 that's fine okay it's okay so what i do is um d over dt mi ri dot q alpha what is this now this will give you r double dot term but it will generate extra term that i will subtract out so it will have mr mi ri dot d over dt acting on this piece right that is what is getting generated extra from the first term alpha that is nice okay now now this is the place where i want to utilize those two results which i uh, showed you you remember the first one i can use in here first one was that the time derivative of ri with q alpha i can replace by a time uh, sorry not time derivative the partial the partial derivatives of ri with q alpha i can replace by a partial derivative of ri dot with q alpha dot right let's see here okay ri q alpha turn to ri dot q alpha dot that's what i will do here equals d over dt m i r i dot and del r i dot over del q alpha dot you'll you'll realize soon why all this is going to be useful minus in the second term i'll use the second result and what was that if you take a time derivative of this quantity you can replace it by putting a dot over ri right so that's what i'll do minus m i r i dot del r i dot over del q alpha that's good and it is good because of the following reason this i can write as d over dt of now what is this this is i can put the ri dot in here inside inside the Uh, derivative term here so it will become ri dot square but then i will have an extra factor of 2 right because if you take the derivative of r square r dot square it gives 2 r dot del r dot so i get an extra piece of 2 so i remove that one by writing half and then del r i dot square over q alpha dot minus the same thing here half m i del over del q alpha r i dot square okay now these half m i pieces these pieces i can uh, put them next to the r i dot squares same in both and you know that half m ri dot square is the kinetic energy of the ith particle so this will become d over dt half uh, del over del q alpha dot half m i r i dot square right minus again del over del q alpha 
and m i r i dot square and there's a half these are your kinetic energy terms okay now if you go back and see here the term that was the term number one so i substitute here you see this is what uh, this is the thing which i have calculated so i plug it in here what is this they say summation over alpha and i'm bringing in the summation over i and what is that d over dt del over del q alpha dot here and then you have summation over all the kinetic energies of individual particles and that will give you the sum of the kinetic energy of the entire uh, that will give you the kinetic energy of the entire system so that's what we get here here um, del o d over dt del over del q alpha dot times t okay see again carefully d over dt del over del q alpha dot and the sigma i this thing is the total kinetic energy of the system which i denote by t that is good and then you again have another one more term summation over alpha del over del q alpha t check it again this is del over del q alpha the minus sign here and t summation over all the particles so that's the total kinetic energy of the system okay that's nice now if i combine the term 1 and 2 I get the D'Alembert Lambert principle in the following form. So I get summation over alpha d over dt del t over del q alpha dot minus del t over del q alpha. And all this, remember, was dotted with the q alpha this equal to zero right so that's the form of the Lambert principle in generalized coordinates and this is very nice one already when we wrote down the Lambert uh, principle the constant forces were gone gone but now what we have achieved is we have written down a relation which involves only independent uh, variations of generalized coordinates remember we were using holonomic constraints so now I can put the coefficient of d, uh, q alpha to be zero for each alpha, right? Because this sum is zero, but because the variations delta q alpha are all independent of each other, this can hold true only if the individual coefficients also vanish. So from here, I get my desired result, d over dt, delta t over delta q alpha dot, Okay, I think I went a little fast. I've included only the second term, the first term I have missed here. So let me let me just write it down here. Minus, you remember this is what you get from the first term. Okay, and then whatever I said just now about uh, independent uh, variations and being able to pick out uh, this coefficient to be zero, which they are correct and I get my final result to be d over dt del t over del q alpha dot minus del t over del q alpha equals q alpha. This is nice. This is very nice. This is nice for several reasons. Okay. This is the equation of motion that the system has to satisfy. Okay, each coordinate Q alpha okay, will evolve according to these set of differential equations. These are not all, uh, uh, I mean they are not necessarily uncoupled, they are all coupled equations, but that's what you have. And look at the T, the T in the numerator in, in these derivatives, they pertain to the entire system. It's not the kinetic energy of individual particles which is entering. It's the kinetic energy of the entire system as a whole that is entering in here. And if you look at the Q alpha, okay, that's also, you see here, uh, why it's not working, yeah, here. When you're looking at Q alpha, there is a summation over all the particles already in there. 
So it's also something not about individual particles, but the system as a whole, which is entering the equation. Okay, so somehow these equations are sensitive to what the system is doing as a whole and is not so much uh, caring about what individual particles are doing. Okay, so from there we will be able to um, have a full description of our system by solving these equations. Now what I will do in the next video is uh, write down this in slightly different form. What I'll do is I'll take the Q alpha, the generalized uh, forces and write down uh, using uh, potential. So I, what I will say is, let's say the forces can be described by scalar potentials and then I will rewrite this equation um, in a diff slightly different form, which is generally more used. But nevertheless, this is the equation and this we will call as several set, several such sets I will call as Euler-Lagrange equations. So this is Euler-Lagrange equation. Okay, so we have done a lot of hard work in arriving at this result and uh, that's quite nice. This will be our, almost our starting point now, except for the fact that I have to do a little bit for something for the Q alpha. Okay. Okay, see you then in the next video.